I would like to say good evening to everyone and welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield Michigan class. My name is Felicia Hamilton. I will be your moderator and your host for this session. Welcome. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were, the Southfield, Michigan branch was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan branch is Dr. Marvin Lewis. The president is Dr. Edward Ewell and the vice president is Dr. Ronald Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Greek language, the Hebrew language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood this form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations later on the spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as yahshua the messiah whom the world calls jesus christ now there is only one name given to salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we must ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. 
after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity and Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through, <coughs> excuse me, through the dispensations of time. <coughs> Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer by Dr. James Dye, followed by scripture, which will be various scripture readings read by myself. So um, I will announce those as it's time to read the scriptures. Dr. Dye. Good evening. Good evening. Let us all of our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Yahweh, we come to you humbly in your son's name, Yahshua, and hope that you give us a more perfect understanding of you, your pattern, your plan of salvation as you operate through the dispensation and ages. These blessings and all blessings we ask in your son's name, Yahshua. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Dye. So we will start off. I'm going to try and pull this over to my screen. Second, last one. That. Okay, there we go. All right, so we are going to have Exodus six. Why it's so slow? Six one through two, and as you can see, we have King James and Holy Name. I'm going to be reading from the Holy Name side. Then Yahweh said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with, a strong, and, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And Elohim spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. Exodus 7 and, 7 and 1. And Yahweh said unto Moses, See, I have made thee an heir to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Exodus 8 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, 
let my people go that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house in thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thy ovens and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon the people and all thy servants. Exodus 9, 1 through 4. Then Yahweh said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of Yahweh is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, and upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep there shall be a very grievous moraine. And Yahweh shall dis distinguish between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is in the children of Israel. Exodus 10, 1 through 6. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show thee my signs before him. And that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and thy son's sons what things I will wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am Yahweh. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, Behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts unto thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth from your, for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth until this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. Last one for Exodus is Exodus um, 11, one through four or seven. And Yahweh said unto Moses, yet will I bring one more plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man deemed of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And Yahweh gave the people favor in sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And Moses said thus, Moses said, Thus saith Yahweh, about midnight will I go out in the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that smited, sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservants that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that Yahweh does distinguish between the Egyptians and Israel. Last verse will be Matthew 24, 1 through 8. Matthew 1. No, I'm sorry, Matthew 24. I did that wrong. Okay, there we go. Matthew 24, and Yahshua went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahshua said unto them, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the age? And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
for, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not, be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the plagues. So those were the scriptures that we wanted for tonight. And I want to once again say good evening to everyone and thank you to Dr. Dai for the prayer. So tonight's lecture, what we're gonna do um, as I promised in I think in July that I would play a uh, recording from Dr. Joel Turner who's the Dean of the Tampa, Florida branch. And as most of you know, he's a cancer research scientist. So he has studied uh, medicine and um, uh, path, pathology all of his life, all of his college life. And he did a lecture right before the first Unity and Yai event in 2017, but it was like a side lecture. So it was a few of us meeting in a room or it turned into a lot of us meeting in a room and Dr. Turner talking about the Zika virus. Now, if you remember the Zika virus was, um, it came into play when they had the 2016 Summer Olympics in Brazil. So if you fast forward and you think about that, we're four years out, the 2020 Olympics is when we started, well, before the 2020 Olympics, but in the year 2020 is when we started with COVID-19. So that's why um, Matthew 24 was read about the pestilence and famines in the earth. So Dr. Turner um, talked about the Zika virus. And I, as I said before, I recorded it on my phone. So I'm hoping the audio quality is good enough for you all to hear. And once um, I play that, that one's about, um, I think, 40 minutes long. And then the other one I'm going to play is just a snippet from a lecture he did in January regarding Ebola, Zika, Zika, and COVID-19. And then after those play, we'll have a discussion. I'm gonna try and present um, pictures and slides as he's talking so that you can get a visual of what he's explaining. So um, without further ado, let me see if I can do this right. And Dorian, you let me know if something's not sounding good. So let me find sound and we'll get started. Okay, here we go. I actually typed up some notes instead of scribbles on the back of the envelopes and stuff. You know, it's like when Yahweh, you know, like sends you something, you just want to scribble it down. You don't want to uh, trust, trust to your memory, but um, this is um, this this was real hot last year, and if you want a good article, now this article is actually more on the the vector for the disease. Now a vector is something that transmits the disease, and in this case, the vector is uh, the mosquito. And the the article is in National Geographic. It's um, August of last year. Okay, so last summer, and the the article is called Science versus Mosquitoes, and um, the mosquito, okay, according to this article, it says, to this day, insects smaller than a child's thumbnail remain the most dangerous non-human animals on the planet. And we don't, we just think of mosquitoes as being a nuisance, okay? But they cause more death of, of people, and people actually kill more people, okay? We're, we're pretty much, the no biggest threat to, to our own species. But uh, the mosquito, it, it's just kind of fascinating that this is such, this creature is, is, is the most dangerous, according to this, the, this uh, National Geo uh, author, the most dangerous creature on, on the earth. Now, um, now, I teach anatomy and physiology, and during part of the anatomy and physiology, we talk about things like sickle cell disease and malaria because there's a connection between the two of them. And um, uh, the, the malaria parasite kills, ba basically it's, it's, it's probably, um, it causes more death than almost any other disease on the planet. And that's transmitted by mosquitoes. 
And um, it's just kind of interesting, and this is kind of an aside thing. Um, the Gates Foundation, which you know is run by Bill Gates, they are actually they have invested money in countries, for example, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, India, different places where they have malaria. And um, the, the, since the the malaria parasite itself is uh, extraordinarily elusive. It has the ability to become resistant to any drugs that we have. And so they, they actually got smart about it as far as treating the animals, uh, or treating the disease. And um, what they did was, is they figured out that the, uh, I think it's the Anal Analopheles mosquito, okay, is the, is the one that passes the malaria parasite. They found out, okay, just from observation, that this mosquito only comes out at night. Mm. So it's like that mystery of iniquity, mm. okay? And he is, you know, one that's going to break into the houses at night, and he's going to try to get you when you're asleep, and so on and so forth. So what they did was, is they spent money, and they bought the people in Africa netting, mosquito netting. Okay, you can say, well, you know, you know, what's the principle behind that? Well, if you look at that elementary chart, it goes this way, it goes that way, mm -hmm. and the principles in the law and the prophets form, as it were, a network. Mm -hmm. And it, the gospel, according to the law and the prophets, is our safety net. You see, that is that understanding is what we fall back on. So. Now, um, the mosquitoes that are involved with uh, the Zika virus are different, mm -hmm. okay? Now, uh, j just a couple more things about the mosquitoes. Now, I, what I'm, what I'm, the principle that I'm working with on this, okay, is the mosquitoes are likened to the mystery of iniquity. Mm -hmm. And the virus that they're transmitting is likened to the false doctrine that is being preached, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> okay, the name of the Zika carrying mosquitoes is the Aedes aegypti. It literally means Egypt. Mm. Okay, it's the Egyptian mosquito. Aedes is kind of a term for mosquito. And then aegypti is Egypt. And um, so if you go to, uh, let's see if I can find that. Okay, give for me please Revelations 11 and 8. Uh, <coughs> Who wants to volunteer to be scripture readers? Okay, I already volunteered you. I'm <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, would you get me then uh, uh, Numbers 11, 4, and 5, please? Now, this mosquito comes out during the day, though. Okay, this Aedes aegypti, which makes it, uh, it, it, it it's a it's an extremely uh, aggressive mosquito, and we have them in Florida. That's why Florida is um, one of the places that um, uh, the uh, the virus has showed up, and the the, uh, the the Florida officials just kind of have gone like absolutely crazy trying to kill this. Too. They're in Jamaica too, and uh, what where where this all started was in Brazil, and if you remember last summer they had the Olympics in Brazil. And that they were worried, and we, it, the jury is still out on this, they were worried that um, the whole world going to Brazil. Now see, Brazil was telling people, oh, it's okay, of course they're going to do that, because that Olympics was worth billions of dollars to them. And um, the, um, the World Health Organization, or WHO, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. they were also telling people that it was Right, but you know, it just just kind of it's funny that their acronym is who, you know, and they're they're kind of in the pocket also. I think to some degree, a, a lot of organizations to, you know, uh, governments and, and that sort of thing. That so um, this virus could be spread due to that Olympics. Now, um, so uh, read for me a, a revelation. 
and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So you have a spiritual Egypt, okay? And that genders to, you see, uh, the mystery of iniquity, okay? Now, you have numbers? Yes. What, 11? 11, 4 and 5. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again uh -huh. and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Uh -huh. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt. See, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Okay? And, and, and the mystery of iniquity wants you to go back spiritually or psychologically to, to Egypt. So it's interesting that the mosquito that spreads the virus, okay, is uh, the, basically the Egyptian uh, mosquito. Okay, so it's likened to that mystery of iniquity. Now, there is a mos another mosquito that spreads it at the nighttime. And the name of it is, is Aedes Fursifer. If you spell Lucifer and put an F on it, you get Fursifer, okay? So I looked up the etymology of Fursifer, and it means uh, a rascal, a scoundrel, a rogue, okay? Pretty much your standard mystery of iniquity kind of stuff, okay? So you have these mosquitoes. Now, these mosquitoes, um, according to this article in National Geographic, and the science of the mosquitoes, and, and uh, like I said, this is in August of last year. Um, the mos this mosquito, and, and they're talking specifically about the Aedes aegypti, okay? The feeding apparatus, apparatus is called a uh, fascicle. And that um, when the mosquito uh, injects this fascicle into you, it's barely perceptible. Most people, it's not perceptible, okay? That this mosquito is so good, and you don't, you don't feel it, you don't hear it. It's just, it's, it's like, uh, you know, like I said, uh, those of you who came in later, that are, uh, in this article they say the, the mosquito is the most dangerous non-human animal on the planet, okay? Now when it injects its fascicle into you, it also injects first an anticoagulant. Okay, so that your blood doesn't coagulate and stop it from sucking the blood up. It also injects an anesthesia, okay, to numb you so that you don't feel it sucking your blood. And uh, what they said in this article, okay, um, okay, this mosquito, okay, it, 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 while it sucks your blood while injecting a mosquito saliva laced with an anticoagulant. Okay, it's amazing that the Yahweh has these. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I work I've I've worked somewhat with anticoagulants, and these things are usually very sophisticated compounds. Okay, <laughs> and yet a mosquito has this. Okay, now the mos mosquito can slip the fascicle. Now see, this is Satan. He can slip this thing in, whatever it is, okay? Now with the people in the world, it's, you know, water baptism and so on and so forth. But just because you are in class, he's not giving up on you. That's right. You know, he may slip into your skin, under your skin, you see, and I'm talking, you know, we say that, okay? Figure Somebody gets under, the, under your skin, okay? He's getting, he's getting under your skin. He's getting... He hears your, he knows your thoughts. Mm -hmm. He hears your prayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know people who swear the mystery of iniquity even works on them in their dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're talking, uh, your father was talking about this and I've heard that before that Satan is no match for Yahweh or Yahshua. And, and I remember talking to Freddie Allen about it and he was talking about how that um, and someone brought this out, I think, too, how that down in Egypt, after the first couple plagues, Pharaoh was ready to give up, and Yahweh had to, no, yeah. he, had, he, had to, he had to pump him up. And he, kept, he had to keep doing that, because 
Pharaoh was just no match for Yahweh down there in Egypt. He had to toughen the guy up. Yeah. Okay? But he doesn't have that problem with us. Okay? Now, with Yahshua in you and being sealed in the Holy Spirit, you know, he's, he's you know, ultimately he can't get you, obviously. But that that's not going to stop him from trying. And that's not going to stop him from going after people who are young in the teaching or people that are weak for whatever reason, you know, whether they're going through problems physically or, or, or mentally. But he may try to slip that in there. And, and what, what he's going to try to do is maybe, see, what I see going on, for example, in a lot of classes, and we've had a little bit of problems with it in our class, is attitudes. Mm -hmm. Trying to get people to, you know, I don't like Rogan. He's, he's, he's too... He's too intellectual, Personality. you know, and uh, or or it's Olivia, like you know, I, I you know, it, and you get a problem with <laughs> with her, and you see, and and, and, and and you look at me, and he, oh, he's educated. He thinks he's smart, you know what I mean, and um, you know, and they may they may not like the way you preach, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. They may and, and and you they may not like your whatever, okay? Dr. Kinley was reported to me to have said that uh, that people wouldn't like the color of your underwear. Okay? Now, I don't know what color your underwear is. That's the whole point. Right. If they don't, they don't even know, and yet they're going to have a problem with you. And that's the mystery of, see, whenever I see somebody having a problem with me or with other people, it's, it's like I know that smell. That, that smell of the mystery of iniquity, if I can put it that way, it's not, it's, it's not obviously, you know. So, the mosquito can slip the fascicle into your skin so gently that you have no idea what's happening until the blood meal is already underway. She, by the way, all mosquitoes that suck blood are female. And isn't Satan, female, isn't that the mother of harlots? You see, the mystery of iniquity is female. And he's the father of lies, too. He's the father of lies, but like, but he, but she is the mother of harlots, too. Okay, and I thought that was talking about mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots. My dad actually went through that lecture because that was that. Well, I, your dad did bring out under, under this covenant, Yahshua is the only male. Mm -hmm. So Satan can't be a male. His spirit, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that if you work like uh, in, uh, in Revelation, that mystery of iniquity is referred to as the mother of harlots. And that's what I was looking at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. The scarlet woman, the Catholic Church is even called the scarlet woman. Okay. So it's looking at the principle of this being Female. Female, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, before, she, before you go, sorry. So uh -huh. when, I, when you say female, then, then what the first thought that came to me before you even said that part was the fact that even Satan was created, right? Mm -hmm. And so the creature is the woman or the female. So, of course, in that aspect of him being, you know, created, then yes, I can see why the female mosquito would be the one that would be, the, you know, mm -hmm. in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. So she can sip your blood until she's more than twice her weight. Um, so that's that's quite a bit. Okay, um, and and um, they actually call them vampires. The, the the mosquitoes it says yes, your vampire is always a female. Okay. Um, May I say something? Yep. Sometimes when they do, they get off you. They're too heavy to fly, so you see them running on the floor. It said that in the article. And when you squash them, you see the blood. Oh, the yeah, blood. yeah. So she's gorging herself, mm -hmm. you know. But okay, I, I want to get through this a little more quickly. So this this kind of goes. See, someone was talking today to me about elephants and how intelligent they are, but mosquitoes are also extremely intelligent. And this is one thing that they brought out on it, okay? They, they have an almost, if, if unchecked, they have an almost unlimited ability to reproduce, okay? And 
when, when Satan was cast out, okay, with a third of the host of heaven, okay, um, you know, I, I kind of wanted to know how much a third of the host of heaven was. And uh, Dennis Volpe told me that, that Dr. Kinley told him that there were more satanic spirits on the earth plane than all the humans that would ever be born here. Mm. Than what? Than all the humans that ever would be born. Mm. Mm. You can't count the stars, so you can't count the You can't, the stars. exactly. Can't that. So, and that's why they inhabit us in legions. And legions, right. yeah. for we are many, yeah. exactly. So the mosquitoes have this, this same ability. Now, uh, they call her she. She can find egg-laying spots. See, they, they need water, okay? So to reproduce, the, the mosquito larvae need water, okay? They need to be in an aqueous environment. And of course, she's drinking your blood, so you got blood and water, okay? And it's an airborne creature, which is symbolic of the spirit, okay? And um, the, the virus that she carries, that uh, a Zika virus, is 40-something, right? Okay, it's 40 nanometers in diameter. So you got blood, water, spirit, 40. Okay. Now, she can find egg-laying spots that aren't wet yet but will be. When the weather changes, she's that ingenious. So the mosquito actually even can find spots that aren't wet, but knowing that they will become wet. She'll lay her eggs, they'll hatch, and the larvae will grow. Mm -hmm. And what they did, like in uh, Palm Beach County, okay, down, uh, down in the Miami area, is they had to go yard to yard, house to house, to get rid of anything they could hold a thimble of water because the mosquitoes could reproduce in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how diligent they had to be. Isn't that amazing how they still try to do water baptism? That's right, that's right. They, they got to be water, that they're into the water baptism. That, that's, that's pretty. Okay, now, so she, okay, and when you reach down to slap a biting Aedes aegypti, She's likely to dart lightly away, escaping the descending palm of death, and then come back and bite you again. <laughs> she makes sure she, that you get a multiple dose, okay? Now, obviously, the physical mosquito does not realize it's transmitting the virus, okay? Th that these are principles behind it. But when you read this article and you look at the science behind the mosquito, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's as if they were made for this job, mm -hmm. okay? Now, um, just a couple more things about mosquitoes. And I read this, this was, on, this was some online stuff I looked at. I, I, I don't remember the site, but I could find it for you. Mosquitoes are actually attracted to women that are ovulating, mm -hmm. okay? Is it because of blood? Pardon me? Is it a blood? Um, I think that they, they give off women that are ovulating have, have pheromones or something that attracts the mosquito. So mosquitoes are actually... Your follicle stimulating hormone rises. Your follicle stimulating hormone rises right before you ovulate. And they're sensing that. So they have an ability to sense ovulating women. Now, where are those women? If I can put it that way. We are, you see, bringing forth fruit of the Spirit, okay? And Yahshua is our husband, okay? Now, uh, we're also the child, too, okay? We can work with it either way. So we're the child of Yahweh, okay? Now, I found this kind of interesting because the, the scripture reading was gotten today on uh, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. Well, it actually... Mosquitoes are attracted to smelly feet. <laughs> I just thought that was so, so crazy. Now this was, this is a really strange one. The scientists have done studies where they looked at mosquito activity and they are 500 times more active during a full moon. Oh, I watched your lecture on lupus. 
Lunacy, I, I just, I really oh. enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did. Because the, the, the old covenant is the moon and, and, yeah. and her ordin ordinances. Right. And the mystery of iniquity wants to get you water baptized. He, you see, he wants you back under that, the, the moon and her ordinances. Right. And if you work with the moon, the principle of the moon, it has obviously no light of its own. It's bone dry. There's no life in it. It only reflects the, the sun. It's not the real thing. Um, just since um, you said that, they were like the Satan spirits. That's all they, the mosquitoes uh -huh. at vampires. Remember, you just said that they are attracted to the feet. Mm -hmm. What's at the bottom of it? the soul? The soul. Right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't you bring that up too? Yeah. You were talking about the, no. Someone was talking about the souls this weekend too. Oh yeah. Okay. Another another forty is that uh, a mosquito actually can migrate. You know, it's hard to believe. It's something can actually migrate up to 40 miles to find a blood meal. Wow. So pretty form formidable. Okay, now, so what happens is, is this virus, when the mosquito will take it in when it bites somebody who has mm -hmm. this disease, okay? And what happens is, is the virus actually escapes the uh, digestive system makes its way to the salivary glands mm -hmm. in, and this is part of its life cycle, okay, of the virus, okay? And so that when the mosquito in, puts that fascicle into your skin and ejects that saliva with the anticoagulant and the uh, anesthetic, okay? See, see, Satan's gonna numb you to the thing, you know, to what's going on, all right? And that, that saliva is filled with the virus. Okay, and remember the mosquito, this mosquito is so stealthy, it gets multiple sticks in you when it's, when it's feeding. What's the anticoagulant again? Keeps your blood from clotting. It, it keeps your blood from clotting. Keeps your blood from clotting. Yeah, so that it can so get... The coagulant will make your blood flow. Yeah. Um, clot. It'll clot. It'll clot. It'll clot. Right, so so this way it gets a nice dose of the blood and it, 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 that's it's not coagulated. There. So anticoagulant yeah. would cause it not to, to flow. flow. Right, flow. right. It would cause it to flow. To flow. Yeah. And a coagulant causes it to the coagulate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't bleed. That's so you don't bleed. This See way. it all. Like for example, a person who's taking Coumadin. It's a thinner. Coumadin is a thinner. It's an anticoagulant. But yet, what they tell you is don't take a lot of vitamin K, because vitamin K is a coagulant, so it fights against it, so that's why you can't have a lot of green leafy vegetables and things like that when you're on Coumadin, because those green leafy vegetables will be the coagulant, and the Coumadin is the anticoagulant or heparin. Okay. So, discuss. So you have these these two types of mosquitoes that they get you. See, it's just like the mystery of iniquity. He doesn't rest. He's going to get you during the day, or he's going to get you at night. He's just he's not going to stop. Okay. So what happens is is that this this virus. Okay. Now, I don't know of any virus that does what this virus does. This, this virus is, and, and, and um, I read an article on viruses also in, in National Geographic, and they were talking about how that there are more new viruses coming along than there has ever been in history. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And it's just showing you that we're, now why would that happen? I mean, they don't know why, okay? Um, there doesn't seem to be an explanation for it, but I just see it as Yahweh's we're coming down to the end of the age, and it talks about pestilence and all this other, you see, uh, uh, plagues and all this other stuff. And, and, and I, mean, I mean, you can work with the AIDS virus, I mean, which, <clears throat> I mean, pretty much didn't even exist until 1980, okay, that people knew of. I mean, it was, it might have been someplace, like in Green Monkeys or something. But this, this virus is, is, is something very new. And, and what's, what's new about it is, is that it affects pregnant women, mm -hmm. okay? And it affects the fetus. And what it causes is what's called microcephaly, which it makes the brain smaller, 
okay? And what goes along with the microcephaly is uh, mental retardation, okay? Now, that there is a transcript where Dr. Kinley talks about retardation and how the, the spiritual uh, 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 principle behind that. And that um, these people out here, they are spiritually uh, uh, retarded, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and uh, so he's putting the bite on people, okay? And uh, it's affecting, you see, the, 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 the growing baby, okay? Now, um, and that goes along with, with, the, with the scripture reading, okay? Now, the other thing that it does, okay, in these babies is it causes blindness, Okay, um, it causes, okay, uh, get, get for me 1 Corinthians 4, and I just want the, who the God of this world has blinded the minds. And um, would you get for me, please, uh, Isaiah 43 and 8, and... Uh, after you read that, okay, go ahead and read that, and then I want Second Timothy uh, four and uh, one through four. Okay. Do you know which? Um, I'm also glad they're getting that. First Corinthians. Second like Second Corinthians. Okay. Is this second viruses are so whole, so hard to get rid of because they have the ability to mutate. Mm -hmm. So they are viruses, mm -hmm. so that they can survive, mm -hmm. just like the satanic spirit. Changes. Changes Every all the time. time. All the time. So yeah. viruses do the same. Okay. Four four. In yes. whom despair. Yeah. Okay. That's why we get flu shots every year. Because of a virus. In whom despair. Where are we reading? Yeah. Um Second Corinthians four four. Mm -hmm. In whom the spirit of this age hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious evangel of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine on to them. So he's blinded their minds, okay? So their minds are affected, and they also are physically blinded mm -hmm. by this virus. Now another symptom of the virus is it causes them to be deaf, okay? So read 2 Timothy uh, 4, 1 through 4. No, I had Isaiah. I got 2 Timothy. Go ahead. Uh, I charge thee therefore before Yahweh and Yahshua Messiah, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort mm -hmm. with all long suffering and doctrine. Mm -hmm. For the time will come mm -hmm. when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now that's going on right now in the IDMR. I mean, you can flip this as to the people in class that in the so-called other camp, they're being infected, okay? And you know, when, when I was talking today, I, I should have made more clear that when I was talking about people getting an understanding, I was just talking about getting an academic understanding, okay? That people come to class, and class makes sense. Mm -hmm. The knowledge that we, I mean, mm -hmm. if someone list, just, whether they get the Holy Spirit or not, there, there are people I have talked to many times over the years, okay, that they said to me, wow, that makes sense. That makes so much more sense than my church. Yeah. And they come to class, they hear how science and the Bible agree. Class makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And they can, some people can actually physically recognize that this is different. And they can look up the names, you know? I know people who, Agree, will agree with you on the information, mm -hmm. but they don't, so they academically understand it. But what'll happen with them is eventually, if they come to class, they will eventually become bored with the teaching, mm -hmm. okay? And they wanna hear something new. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see going on in, in uh, you see, all these people, now it's hard for me to believe, because I know so many, hundreds of people that went over and are believe in the so-called progressive doctrine, right. you know, people that I grew up with in class. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I see where it's constantly changing because 
if it, if they don't, the people are going to get bored with it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So here I thought this whole time that they really had a spiritual understanding, where in fact they only had an academic understanding, mm -hmm. you know. And I've had them come to my class, and because they want to be political, they won't get into, you know. I, I don't even know what they're teaching now. It gets weirder by the day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they won't get into that your soul isn't saved, the threefold entity thing, or any of that stuff. They'll actually get up and give a Law Prophets Fulfillment lecture at our class. So they, they, they remember it, and it made enough sense to them that they could even spit it back to you. But obviously, they did not, they were not sealed with the Holy Spirit, and they didn't have a profound, a true understanding. They have a zeal, but not According, that's it. Okay, so they have been infected by this mystery of iniquity, and they have spiritual zika. Okay, where they they become deaf, they become dumb, they become blind to the truth, and it's that mystery of iniquity that has slipped these doctrines of devils, if I can put it that way, into them. Okay, now. One thing that they called uh, in the article that I had uh, about the uh, Zika virus is they called it a pandemic. And a pandemic is a disease that can spread throughout the world, mm -hmm. okay? And the word pandemic literally means all peoples, okay? So the mystery of iniquity has spread his doctrine throughout the whole world. So, um, so now just one other thing about it, okay? Um, and this, this was happening here in Florida, that uh, a lot of people in Florida are, are actually uh, from South America, okay? So they would go down to South America and they would come back with the Zika virus, all right? Now what they found out that the people actually did not get the virus from mosquitoes. They got it from sexual intercourse. So this virus not only is spread by mosquitoes, it's also spread by sexual intercourse. So people are having, you know, uh, spiritual intercourse, if I can put it that way, with the mystery of iniquity, and are contracting that, that, that virus. And that's what caused it to spread in Florida. And at one point I was watching the news, just one second, I was watching the news, it, th th there's so many, there, there, there's a, a number of different 40s. Okay, you got the 40 miles, you got the 40 nanometers, the size of the virus. And then in Florida, there were 40 pregnant women that were infected with the virus, okay, which was in the, in the, in the news. You know, not 39, not 41, but 40, okay? Um, so, um, oh yeah, the other thing about, about the virus is that um, these people who came back from South and Central America who were either infected by mosquitoes or by sexual intercourse, they did not realize they had it. Mm -hmm. So they don't realize that they're infected, okay? So you talk to someone who's going to church, they don't realize they've been infected mm -hmm. by the mystery of iniquity that they have spiritual Zika virus, okay? You talk to people in the other camp, they think they're right. Yeah. They think Dr. Harris is Dr. Kinley. They, they literally think that. They'll, they'll, it, 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 you gotta pin them down on it, though. I mean, they'll say to you, well, Dr. Kinley is still here. And we're like, well, what do you mean by that? You know, and, and, and and you work them over long enough, and they'll they'll finally say, no, Dr. Kinley is in Dr. Harris. Now, this is not an original idea, okay? There have been uh, at least a half dozen people who, after Dr. Kinley took off the flesh, claimed to be the new Dr. Kinley, okay? And, um, you know, there were a couple in California, uh, you know, and here and there and other places, you know? And, uh, you know, it's, 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 so, but you talk to, you know, example that I was thinking of that when he has come to visit my class, got up and got into blood, water, spirit, mm -hmm. death, burial, resurrection, because he knows we can't talk about this. Mm -hmm. And 
I basically got together with him and talked to him for three solid days. And I'm talking from morning till evening about these doctrines that they're teaching. Okay? And I got him to, I, I really worked him over. Okay? And, and I did it because I love him. And it wasn't to beat him up. It was trying to get him to come out of that. And he admitted to me that Dr. Kinley didn't teach what they're teaching. He admitted to me it wasn't in the scriptures. And he admitted to me that there was no proof as far as in the physical creation for it, as far as an example in the physical creation. And, and so at the end, of, when I finally got him to, to verbally, I forced him to verbally admit this to me. Okay. Then I asked them, why do you believe it? And he just was quiet. And I said, well, if you won't tell me, I'll tell you why you believe it. It's because you're following after a man. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And he is, he was so mad at me, he didn't talk to me for about five years. Mm -hmm. Okay, And we haven't communicated really in, in 10 years, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it just, but you can, you know, you can see the mystery of iniquity working these people over and how they become deaf, dumb, and blind to the truth. And, and you know, so, so that's, that's mainly it that I, that I have with the Zika virus. Um, uh, you know, it, so. I have one quick question about yes. that. Uh -huh. I don't know if you covered it. Um, I know from like on the news what effect Zika has on like a pregnant woman and her child being born. What does it have, what impact does it have, let's say, if a man or like what type of, you say they know, they, they can have it and don't know that they've been infected by it. But is there anything that would ever happen, let's say, if it's not a woman and it's not a pregnant woman and her child that's been affected. Let's just say if a man has um, been bitten by a mosquito or whatever and has, like, what happens then to them? Nothing. Okay. The, but, but the man becomes a carrier. Right. Okay. But it just affects the woman. Right. Spray and right. She'll have it. Okay. I mean, it's kind of like. Um, and then he impregnates a woman and she'll have it. And right. then she has. Of the, the sexual intercourse. Because of the. the the way it's, it's carried in the bloodstream. Yeah. Okay, you have to think about life is in the blood. Right. Okay, so therefore, what is very vascular and reproduces life, their reproductive system, and it has to have a lot of blood, so therefore the virus crosses that blood barrier mm -hmm. into the fluids, mm -hmm. the sexual fluids, mm -hmm. and that's how it ends up. Yeah. And the female, and very much so in the female, even, and it's even true with the HIV virus because that's what the uh, problem is, in the vagina is vascular and it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. The virus itself gets absorbed into the bloodstream because the semen sits there. Mm -hmm. Only some of it makes it where it needs to go. The rest of it kind of sits there and gets pushed back out. But the virus itself has, has already crossed over in the barrier. That's one reason why when even with HIV, that virus first hit, why it was predominantly in your uh, male homosexual population, because the lower part of the rectum is very vascular. Its purpose is to absorb fluid. That's how you, your stool ends up formed and not liquidy. So therefore, the virus is absorbed very rapidly there, even faster than it would be absorbed in the vagina of a woman. So that's the reason why, and that's what you have to think about when you start thinking about they're asymptomatic and they're carriers, but they pass the virus on to the female. And then the female, of course, now it's in her bloodstream and she is no longer, let's say, a reproducing female. And she's just a regular female. Now you have that virus. She's not reproducing life anymore. So for whatever reason, and for that reason, she does not have it in her, it won't affect her children, but when another unsuspecting mosquito come along and bite her, mm -hmm. it's picking up the virus from her and taking it to the next person. Yes, yes. So if you're asymptomatic, is the virus in the blood stream and definitely? They don't know. They don't there know hasn't yet. been enough research 
And also, I think at this point in time, there's no virus or no uh, vaccine for it yet either. One of the things I read today, just today, was that one of the most effective things for mosquitoes is wind. Fans. What about it? Wind? Fans. Fans. Yeah. Oh. The wind, which is by the spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Because they're so antidote? light. If there's no virus, what about an antidote after the fact that you have it? Um, viruses are funny things. Um, you take it. There's. They do have antivirals, mm -hmm. but they don't cover all all types of viruses. Okay, um, if you look at the principle of a virus too, is from a scientific standpoint, a virus does not qualify as being alive. Okay, mm -hmm. there are certain criteria for biological life, and uh, one one of them is that you can feed yourself. A virus can't do that. Okay, uh, you have uh, you have to be able to reproduce yourself. Okay, but these are all criteria. Viruses are basically once they get into a host, the host feeds them. The host provides uh, the DNA and the proteins to reproduce them, and so they actually call them. Uh, some people, or some scientists, call them uh, pathological chemicals. But they do have the ability to to reproduce. They're 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 essentially non-living. And I mean, technically, uh, the mystery of iniquity is not alive mm -hmm. spiritually. So. Okay, so that was the first uh, recording. Once again, uh, thanks for everyone else that joined in the middle. That was the recording of Dr. Joel Turner in August of 2017 during, um, after one of the lectures at the First Unity and Yah Symposium. So he was speaking on the Zika virus, which was, um, was, was predominantly in the news and it started the year before during the uh, 2016 Olympics. So he, I guess he had a lot of questions from people. So we went to a, um, a, a side room and he had that conversation and I recorded it on my cell phone. So now, this second lecture is Dr. Turner in January, uh, January 31st, and this is on YouTube. He was the last speaker. He didn't speak for long, but I wanted to play this as well because it will tie in with some of the things Dr. Turner mentioned in the first recording that you heard, you know, about pandemic and mutating viruses and, and you know, how, how we have more viruses now than we've ever had in history. So this one is a little shorter. Um, it's only about uh, 20 minutes or so. So once uh, we listen to this one, we'll, we'll stop at that time and get questions and have a little bit of a follow-up. So here we go with the second recording. Discuss also a little bit more about uh, 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 the, the, the virus and the vaccine and a little bit about things that are going on, you see, in the creation right now. Okay, and I have 23 minutes to, to talk about it. Now, um, Pam, could you, can you let me share my screen and do the, the whiteboard? Okay. Okay, now where do I find the whiteboard? Okay, whiteboard. Okay. Now, um, in the last few years, okay, there is, you know, now see, it, it, you can, you're all familiar with the, the, the scripture, and I believe it's in Matthew, the 24th chapter, where it talks about that there will be pestilences, you see, down at the end of this age. Now, we've had three very significant pestilences that have gone on in this creation. Right now, we have the coronavirus, okay? Um, previous to this, you see, we've had two other viruses that 
have been like nothing else that we've seen before. And those include, you see, uh, uh, the, the Ebola virus and the uh, Zika virus, okay? And that these have been, these viruses, they're very different from each other, okay? And they've come from different parts of the world, but these are symbolic of uh, things that are going on as far as the mystery of iniquity is concerned, okay? Now, the, 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 there are spiritual principles because these are, uh, the, the general category for all these are, they are influenza, which literally means influence, okay? And you look up, uh, if you look this up, it basically means influence you see, by a spirit, you see, or by that mystery of iniquity, okay? That uh, you see, um, now, some principles with the virus, okay? They are not living. These are not like a bacteria. These are not, they don't have cells. They are basically, you see, they are considered by science, you see, a pathological, okay, a pathological uh, chemical or agent, okay? So I just want to pause right here just to um, give a heads up. There's going to be a portion where Dr. Turner talk, starts talking about vaccines, but he keeps saying virus. So just get that in your head that he means vaccine. And eventually his wife tells him, you keep saying virus when you mean vaccine. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. They're not living, you see, from a natural standpoint, they're not considered living, you see. And neither is that mystery of iniquity. That mystery of iniquity, okay, he is, you see, oops, he is, he is basically spiritually, okay, I'm sorry about my spelling, spiritually dead, okay? I do know how to spell spiritually, I just typing and stuff. So he is, you see, from a net, see, see, we are the ones that are alive, okay? You know, it's so funny how that there's so many uh, movies and shows and series, of, you see, uh, with, with zombies, okay? The Walking Dead, okay? Mm -hmm. You see, now people used to, pe people used to ask, and this, this was a, a funny thing. This was from years ago. People used to ask if we talked to the dead. Okay, and we would say to them, uh, you see, it, <laughs> this is when we had a little less wisdom. Okay, we'd say, yes, open your mouth, I'll speak to you. Okay, or in other words, you see, the people out here in the world, they are spiritually dead. Okay, at that funeral, you see, uh, uh, now L L Lenora's body was there, but Lenora is alive and well. Okay, all her all those people that were there at her funeral, other than the people in class, they were the ones that in fact, in Yahweh's eyesight, are dead, spiritually so. They have no knowledge of Yahweh, you see? That, and, and therefore, you see that, you know, and, and you work with that eternal life is, you see, to know Yahweh. They have no knowledge. They were the, you see, that's, that's kind of the irony of the whole thing. You see, you go to a funeral and the person that they're having the funeral for, she's alive and well, you see. You see, but all the people at the funeral crying about it and hollering about it and Jesus this and Jesus that, they were the ones that in Yahweh's eyesight were dead, okay? Now back to this virus. It is a non-living thing. Okay, now one of the definitions, and the reason why is one of the definitions of, of life is that it can procreate. A virus cannot procreate. It cannot make new viruses. It needs a host. It needs to in infect a host. Now these viruses here are interesting, okay? The Zika virus was passed by, you see, mosquitoes, okay? 
through what? Blood. What through the blood? Mm -hmm. Okay. The Ebola that virus, you see, was passed through contact. You see, and this contact was made through water. Mm -hmm. That what they did, and this is in certain African tribes, you see, and these were Christians, folks, that they would baptize the dead. And that when they baptize the dead, that they would come in contact with this water. And that when they baptize the dead, the virus would spread. And it was so bad that you see someone in a village, in, in a village out in the middle of nowhere, you see, uh, in Africa, would die. And see, everybody in the village was related. So that what they would do is they would have a funeral and they baptized the dead, and then they would take that water and wash themselves in the water that they baptized the dead with, which honestly to me sounds pretty disgusting. But you see, this baptism, you see, is what caused the spread of this virus, okay? Now, I just wanna say one thing before I forget. You see, the water was on the outside. Okay, and that what they did, what this did is, is that this caused, you see, death. But what they found was, you see, with the Ebola virus, that all they had to do was to give somebody, you see, an IV of water or fluids. And that if they gave them fluids, or in other words, if the water was on the inside, hmm. you see, they would live. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I mean, do I have to even correlate this stuff? You see, we are, you see, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You see, didn't Yahshua say to that woman at the well, you see, if you ask me, I would give, I would give you living water that you would never thirst again. You see, this gospel, you see, is that living water now if the water gets on the inside or into you see in your soul or in your inner man you see it's life but if you're out here getting water baptized or that water is on the outside you see that can kill you from a spiritual standpoint that that's death just like if you, if, now you don't have to do it right now, but you just imagine that Moses chart on the bottom of that Mo Moses chart, just in your mind. See, don't that, don't at the bottom there that has the earth inundated in water, you mm -hmm. see, and that earth was in darkness and in a death-like state. And that mystery of iniquity was cast down into that chaotic place, okay? Now, then you have the flood, you see? Now, that it, how how well did the people who got wet fare okay mm -hmm. noah and his family they stayed nice and dry everybody who got wet they died okay now you take the children of israel coming up out of egypt children of israel walked walked through on dry ground but you see the pharaoh and his host they got wet now how 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 did that work out for them mm -hmm. okay it didn't work out very well now, the symbol, and I mentioned this in a recent class, but you see, if you look at a, um, an Ebola virus, okay, it's, it's, it's not like that coronavirus, which is a very pretty looking virus. It, it's, it's got little jewels surrounding it, you see. It, the word corona means crown, you see. This is, you see, you see, this is something, it's something different. The Ebola virus, is literally shaped like a question mark. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is the literal shape of this virus. Now you look at that, uh, you see at the elementary chart and you have those that are under the mystery of iniquity and they have this, you see, this, this question mark you mm -hmm. see, over their head. Pardon me? You see, they exactly. have this question mark. You see, in, in other words, that you see, it was the it's the ignorance, you see, in the world, and then being you see, Dr. Kinley talked about physical water baptiz 
baptism a lot, okay? Showing forth those covenants, how that that was, you see, they were under that old covenant, which was death, you see, and that, you see, they are in a state of ignorance, okay? So look, we have blood, all right? Oops, we have uh, blood, we have water now how is the coronavirus spread mm -hmm. it is spread air. through the air mm -hmm. you see now satan is called the prince of the power of the air okay now are they talking about physical air no this is a this is a spirit this is this is a spirit so you see the mystery of iniquity is and and these viruses are going right according to the pattern in that you have blood, you have water, and you have spirit. Now the Zika virus caused mental retardation, mental, mental retardation. Okay, I know that that's probably not, you see the, you see, retardation, okay, you see, it caused microcephaly, all right? It caused the, the children, you see. See, now, now we're pregnant with the Holy Spirit. And there are those that are pregnant with that unholy spirit, you see. And the offspring, if I could put it that way, the outcome is spiritual retardation. And Dr. Kinley talked about uh, in a transcript, spiritual retardation, you see. In, 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 in the principles behind that, okay? And, and that, you see, this virus was not only split, spread through the blood, through those mosquitoes, which are the creatures of the night, you see, and, but it was also spread by, you see, uh, a sexual uh, uh, um, uh, intercourse, you see, and it caused blindness, okay? caused blindness, it caused retardation, it caused deafness, okay? All right, now the Ebola virus was gruesome, okay? It caused, you see, death, you see, basically by those, uh, uh, by those viruses, okay? And that it was actually spread by an evangelical group caused called the Lord's Resistance Army. I don't know why I'm tapping all this out. I just maybe give you more of a visual of it, okay? So it was actually spread by this Christian group, okay? It's a Christian fundamentalist group whose teaching was to follow the Ten Commandments. They were preaching carnal ordinances. Now, this group became radicalized they preyed on children. They would go into villages and they would abduct or kidnap the children. And then what they would do is they would cause these children to murder other people so that they would be afraid to go back to their families, that their families would not take them back. This group was just as satanic as, as, as it gets. Now, here's the thing about it. The World Health Organization sent people in there to help them to stop them from water baptizing and to give them IV fluids because at the time there was no vaccine. There is a vaccine now for Ebola, by the way, and, and, and President Obama was behind uh, that being developed, okay? And what did they do to the ones that tried to save them? They killed them. That these people were in constant fear. The people that were sent to save them, they, 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 they blamed them for the virus instead of, you see, looking at what they were doing. You see, in, 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 you see, the people that were sent there to save them, didn't they kill them? Now, didn't they kill all the apostles? They, they killed every one of them. And Yahshua said, of, you see, of the prophets, which of the prophets has your father, did your fathers not kill? You see, and... Uh, <laughs> You see, and, and see, from a spiritual standpoint, folks, when people are trying to take us off 
the air, to try to get us from preaching this gospel. They're trying to kill us, you see, from a, a, a spiritual standpoint. They're trying to kill the message, okay? Now, this, so this Ebola virus, you see, basically caused, you see, what would happen would be basically this virus would liquefy the internal organs of the person, you see, and kill them from the inside. You see, it, 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 it caused, you it see, or in other words, their inner man. It attacked their inner man. You see, just like that Zika virus caused retardation and blindness and deafness. Now, the coronavirus, you see, the coronavirus, you see, it's, it, it has, <laughs> it's tearing through the world, folks. And, and I have a quote from, a, uh, from an article that this virus, this is a quote, it's from, uh, from the Atlantic Magazine. Okay, it says the virus is tearing through a world of immunologically naive person, per persons, people. Now, naive is a, per if you look up the definition, it is a person showing a lack of judgment, experience, or wisdom. Okay, now, for coronavirus, okay, now Bob White mentioned this, there's three types of vaccines okay that are available okay the first type is 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 and, and this is the oldest type is basically it's it's they take the virus they kill it and they inject it into your body okay now this is the oldest type of virus now, if you look at your tabernacle, what do you have in the court roundabout? Don't you have a death or a sacrifice? Okay. And they take that dead virus and they inject it in the blood. Wasn't there blood in that court roundabout? You see? And it's, and it's injected as a fluid or you have water. Okay. Now, the second kind of virus that they have, pardon me? Vaccine, I'm sorry, the second kind of vaccine that there is, okay, now I only have four minutes, is a protein virus, okay? Now, what they do is they take specific proteins and they inject them, and that they, basically, this feeds the immune cells, okay? The immune cells take this up, okay, and they devour it, they break it down, and then they, it, it basically then, you see, it, 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 so, so it would be like, you see, the principle that I'm looking at is it would be likened to that bread in that court roundabout. And that it basically enlightens the body to the presence of that virus, okay? And, and so now if you go to the next type of virus or vaccine is these new vi vaccines that are made of messenger RNA, mRNA, messenger RNA, you see, and that these viruses are coated with oil, okay, in lipids. And the word lipid means oil, okay, if you look it up in, in the Latin, okay? And that this messenger RNA is a type in the shadow of, you see, Yahshua, and that it contains a message you see, in, 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 or a gospel, if I could put it that way. And that this gospel, you see, now the thing about this, this, this mRNA2 is because it's in the lipid, it can pass right through the cell membrane and go right into, you see, the cell, you see, into the holy place of the, of the cell. And then it teaches, you see, it, 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 it basically, okay, it, it, so it goes through that veil, if I can put it that way, you see, just as that high priest went into that veil, you see, and had a vision. And that messenger RNA, you see, see that high priest, he was, you see, is a type of Yahshua, and that he would then take that message, you see, or in other words, when that light came through, he would take that message and that he would bring it out 
into the, uh, uh, out to the people and they would blow the trumpet, you see. And that this is basically also, all three of these methods, by the way, teach the body, okay? And I don't have more time to get into more detail on it, you see, but it, it's right according to the pattern. Now, the least effective virus is, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this as number three. What? The least effective vaccine, I keep on saying virus, I'm sorry, is, is the, 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 the dead, okay? The, the sacrifice. The second is, you see, and, and this is what's coming out right now, you see, is, is, uh, is these protein viruses. The most effective virus or vaccine, 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 Okay, <laughs> the most effective vaccine is this messenger RNA or the spirit vaccine, okay? This vaccine, now they say it's 95% effective. Actually, I found an article and that this was also said in the news that you see scientists are by nature conservative and that it actually is 100% because 5% of the people may get corona, but their, their, their immune system will be able to fight it off. So it's essentially, you see, they'll, it'll be like, a, it would be like having a cold. That'd be about it, okay? That this, the spirit vaccine, if I can put it that way, is 100% effective. This vaccine, you see, the protein vaccine is about 55 to 65 percent effective you see and the uh, uh this vaccine here which is similar to the flu vaccine is about 49 percent effective so you see now now look at i'll just say one last thing there's all kinds of misinformation on these vaccines and people are told not to get them and are afraid to get them these are lies that are being taught to the people. And this is showing forth spiritual principles. Just as you see, the gospel is ill spoken of. The gospel of Yahshua the Messiah is ill spoken of. You see, these vaccines, which teach and enlighten the body so that it can fight that mystery of iniquity. You see, these are being ill spoken of, you see. So I'm out of time. Uh, sorry, I went a minute over. I hope you got something out of that. Folks, we are in some interesting times, okay? And I, I really enjoyed the, the, the song and the prayer and, and the previous speakers. And, and uh, you see, uh, uh, love and peace in Yahshua to everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. So that was a little longer than I thought, but I hope everyone enjoyed that. So um, just to, to um, uh, level set here, we the first audio we played was from the 2017 Unity and Yai event. It was their first one. And Dr. And that Dr. Joel Turner, who was a cancer research scientist, talked about the Zika virus and, and how it, um, how the mosquito uh, displays or displays characteristics of the satanic spirit. Then that uh, led to the second audio that you listened to and video because he, he had it on YouTube. It was their January 31st class of this year where Dr. Turner talked about the Ebola virus, the Zika virus, and the coronavirus. And Dr. Turner went into a few um, issues, I'm sorry, a few facts about the vaccine. And let me just... Um, uh, prerequisite with this. I am not telling anyone to get it or not to get it. We are a research organization. We're all adults. You do your own research. But for me, it was very interesting listening to it because there are only certain sites that I go to to find out information and they are reputable sites. I try not to go on sites. Any site you see that has that starts off with 
what they're not telling you or uh, the mainstream media or bioweapons cover up sites like that are most of the time not reputable. And the reason they're not is because their main goal is to discredit. And so we know what does the satanic spirit do? He's an accuser of the brethren. That's what those non-reputable sites do. They're always pointing fingers. Well, you shouldn't do this. They're covering up that. That's their goal. So I go to sites like the cdc.gov, who.int, that's you know the World Health Organization, michigan.gov, mayoclinic.org, New England Journal of Medicine, sites like that where they don't accuse what they do is they present facts and evidence and they let you, the reader, you know, judge for yourself. So once again, that's why um, I wanted these played. It's just to present the information, present the facts, and you decide what it is that you want to believe or you ask Yahweh to show you the truth and hopefully he'll do so. So a couple of interesting things that Dr. Turner brought out and I want to um, show really quickly if I can get my mouse to move over to the other page. He spoke about um, how vaccines are developed. And if you listened, he spoke about three ways that vaccines are developed. And it's, it's really quite interesting, I think. Okay, there it is, the page is like, really hidden down there. Let's see if I can get this to come up. Uh, three ways that vaccines are developed. So you have um, vaccines that are developed from a dead virus, like the flu vaccine that's developed from a portion, a, a dead part of the flu. And that's why some people, some people, not everyone, because a lot of people say, I got the flu from it. Nine times out of 10, it was a different strain of flu that the virus didn't cover, the vaccine didn't cover. But once again, it's developed from a dead vaccine. And Dr. Turner mentioned that how that first vaccine is developed from a dead virus. And I'm trying to find it in English and I keep finding it in Spanish. So let me see if I can find it. Um, and then the second virus, the second vaccine, see, I'm doing the same thing Dr. Turner did. The second vaccine is developed also from a virus, but it's not from a dead virus, it's a protein from the virus. So that would put you in the holy place. I'm gonna bring up the Word document because this is just not working. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is just showing you how vaccines work. So you have three different types of vaccines. You have one that's developed from a dead virus. You have one that's developed from a protein of the virus. And then you have one that's developed not from the virus at all, but it's, it's, it's taking a small part of the antigen and teaching the vaccine to recognize that antigen. And then when your body when your body recognizes it, it knows to attack it. So what it does is when you get that vaccine in small doses, your body starts to develop those antibodies, which we know is, you know, you see they're shaped like a Y for a reason. Your body starts to develop antibodies. That way, if you do come in contact with the virus, your body knows already, oh, I know what this is. I've seen this before attack. And that's when Dr. Turner, if you listen to his first lecture, Lecture. He said when he listens to people in class or anywhere else that are attacking other people, he says, I know that smell. Why? Because he has the antibody, which is Joshua, that has taught him what to look for, which is the uh, attributes of that satanic spirit, which is this one here. So he says, I know that smell. So in other words, he has the antibody that will detect that satanic spirit. So he's ready to right. fight it. And that's what a vaccine does. All it does is teaches your body, hey, this is a satanic spirit. Next time you see it, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna attack. That's what vaccines do. That's what all vaccines do. That's why we don't have polio anymore because of the vaccine that was developed. So I thought it was very interesting that what, there were three types. Now the type that they developed, and he said this for the um, coronavirus, it's called a mRNA vaccine. And what that means is now we know mRNA is a messenger RNA. The messenger RNA goes directly to and speaks directly to the DNA or the father. So the messenger RNA is Joshua. That's, you remember, we're talking about spirit here. That's all we're talking about. So that messenger RNA is Joshua. That's telling you, hey, 
this person has the Holy Spirit, they've been vaccinated, they've been inoculated. Next time we see that satanic spirit try to come at them a different way, that's why you have different diseases. You have measles, you had chicken pox, you have the flu, which be, okay, let me back up because I'm gonna get ahead of myself. So you have different diseases. So when you get that vaccine, your body knows it's already had the antigens. Now it knows to attack and eradicate that disease. So the mRNA vaccine that they've developed is a new type of vaccine and it's more effective because as Dr. Turner talked about, it's coated in oil and we know oil represents the Holy Spirit. So that's why the vaccine is more effective. The problem we're having, as you know, with the different variations or variants is because enough people aren't vaccinated, that disease has more chances to mutate. So what it will do is it'll change. And so it has different antibodies. Okay, now I got the shot. Now there's, let's say there's a gamma variant because now the, the, the variants are being named after the Greek alphabet. If you notice there was an alpha, now we're on the Delta. Next thing you know, it'll be the next one. The last one we know, think about it in the spiritual. What would be the last one? I don't know if there's anybody on this Greek. What's the last letter in the Greek alphabet? Well, you should all know this. Omega, right? Omega. Alpha and Omega. So that, you know, if we get to that, if Yahweh allows, we'll get to that Omega variant and who knows what may come. But to get back to the different vaccines and remember talking about spirit. So don't put it on the physical, but it's, it's the spirit. We have to have the physical to point to the spirit. So this mRNA vaccine that they've developed for COVID is coated in oil. So it's more effective. It can slide through. It can get through to those cells. And because it has quote unquote, the Holy Spirit, it can tell those cells, hey, this thing, if you see this thing coming, and you, you be ready. So then your body starts to develop these antigens, which are shaped like Y's, and it's ready. So it's ready to fight. So they're almost like they're, what did Yahweh say? Have your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, be ready. That's where your body is once it gets that vaccine, it's ready. So when you encounter someone that has it and you get it, you end up with a cold versus the disease. So you have to think about which is worse, the vaccine or the disease. So your body knows to fight it. So the reason you have um, symptoms after a vaccine is because your body is preparing itself for it. It's not it's not going to make you get the disease, it's preparing itself, it's developing those antigens. So then you started to have mild symptoms, but you don't develop the full-blown disease. So I, I thought it was really interesting, and I'll try and send out those slides that I can't find of the different uh, vaccines and the way they're developed, because I thought it was pretty how it did go by the pattern. The first vaccine they ever developed, and most of the ones, especially the flu, they are developed from a dead virus. So that places you in the court roundabout. The second virus that they developed has a piece of the virus, but it has, and I forgot how he mentioned it, but it will place you in the holy place. And then the third virus that you, I'm sorry, the third vaccine that you have has is more of an mRNA vaccine, which is mRNA is, is the um, messenger that will be like the, the high priest in his tabernacle that has been anointed with oil to officiate airlessly in this tabernacle. So that virus is coated with oil and it's a messenger. So that would place you in the most holy place. So I thought it was very pretty and everything goes by this pattern. And it just goes to show you that there is, Yahweh gives us no excuse for ignorance. And that's why, you know, I had, I, I reached out to Dr. Turner to ask him if he had any you know, lectures on the vaccine and he sounded exasperated. He said, you know, I'm at the point now where people are going to do what they want to do. Social media is, you know, people are listening and talking to their friends and social media and not doing their research. This is a research organization. Go to reputable sites, talk to doctors, talk to scientists, make your decision on that, not on social media or anything else like that. So I, I just thought it was pretty because he was re able to relate every single thing he was talking about um, to the spirit. So 
that is really all I had. And because I've done the moderation and the prayer, <laughs> I am almost out of uh, breath and my mouth is dry. So I want to um, give another speaker a chance to maybe um, kind of like go off of what we just talked about with this, this whole uh, virus vaccine and pestilence, which is why we had the scriptures read that we read, which was, you know, the the accumulation of it was Matthew 24th chapter, um, which is where we are now. And that's kind of our theme song. So um, I will stop there first and ask if anyone has any questions. If not, I'll, I'll call on a speaker to kind of uh, bring us to a conclusion and close out the class. Do we have any questions from anyone? I'll give you time to come off mute because I know that may take a second if you do. No? Okay, well, we'll try and, and I know to be a surprise, but if um, hopefully you won't be too mad at me, but our next speaker will be Dr. Dorian Lewis. Oh uh, yeah, I got something for you, Felicia. Uh, well, good evening, class. I enjoy class. I enjoy uh, hearing the um, manifestations of the principles of Yahweh's purpose that he has laid out throughout the entire Bible. I enjoy hearing that applied to our current day situations, and things that uh, physical manifestations, so that we might be able to understand how Yahweh is operating. And uh, we can, can you go back to those scriptures, Felicia, that you got? Because I want to uh, reiterate the point that Felicia said. Yep. I, I see. Uh, Pull them up real quick. Just get them and hold them for me. I see it in okay. uh, uh, in these class in these schools, and uh, I've seen it in myself. And I have to ask Yahweh to make me focus. What What are you telling me, Yahshua? Oftentimes, it's easy for us to get caught on a physical manifestation. And so remember what we're looking for is to understand how Yahweh is carrying out his purpose, spiritually so, how he's changing us psychologically and spiritually so. Coronavirus, Zika, all this, those are physical things. Those are physical manifestations of what's happening in the spirit. So as Felicia said, you're an adult. Get the vaccine, don't get the vaccine. It's your choice. I'm nobody telling you, I mean, we, I think, uh, Someone in, in our class said in another class, we get all these comments from people in the class, you're all talking about the vaccine. And you're all, I'm like, why are people tripping so much? Do what you want to do. <laughs> you know? So I think the problem is focus on the spiritual manifestation. What is Yahweh saying? If you get the virus, you get the vaccine or not, we all taking off this flesh. So I say that to people all the time when they ask me about cancer. I'm very thankful that Yahweh healed me from cancer. But guess what? I'm taking off the flesh sooner or later. <laughs> Just postponed it. So that's not the point. The point is what he did for me spiritually. And so the point is what he's showing us spiritually through these events that we're seeing manifested and played out. So I'll get those scriptures with me. Okay. The first one was Exodus 6 and 1 through 2. Right. Now, yet, we know the scripture. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. We know the scripture to the law and to the testimony. Mm-hmm. They speak not according to his words because there's no light, no light in them. Yahshua said, lo, I come in the volume of the book, the volume, the thick part, the big part of the book. He's taught that all what's commonly called the Old Testament, that's the volume of the book. All of that was written, foreshadowing, foretelling, or prophesying what Yahshua Messiah, this Savior, this promised Savior would do. What he would accomplish, what he would save his people from. And what he would do, save us from spiritually. All right. So we're going back to Moses. Remember, Yahshua told them when, uh, after he resurrected. They said, we, oh, they didn't understand. I thought he was going to be resurrected. He began at Moses to explain to them how he fulfilled the scriptures. So that's why we're starting here. I said all that to say that. Go ahead. Exodus 6 and 1. Then Yahweh said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I would do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Right. And, and Elohim spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. Exodus 7. Oh. Go ahead. So, no, no, no. That's good. I, I didn't know mm-hmm. we were stopping. I don't have to pull it okay. up. Okay. Um, look at my Bible. So you see now, you see what Yahweh said there, though. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. See, in my Bible, I got a Schofield reference, and I think it says the contest with Pharaoh, like when it mm-hmm. started to part. There was no contest. <laughs> it was already planned out. <laughs> Good stand, Yahweh right. already had. He said, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. He's not going to let him go. He's going to want to let him go. I'm going to harden his heart again, as Dr. Turner said. Yahweh has this whole thing in control. And I think sometimes that's still part of me that doesn't really understand it or believe that. Yahweh has this whole thing in control. All right. So that's what we're going back to get this for. Go ahead to the next group. Mm-hmm. Exodus 7. It's all been done before. Exodus that's 7. Right. Exodus 7, 1 through 5. And Yahweh said unto Moses, See, I have made thee an heir to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. That I, mm-hmm. no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. That I may lay hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, wait. out of the land. Of, mm-hmm. He said he's going to wait. Mm-hmm. He didn't say, and Pharaoh, you're going to go up there and tell Pharaoh and he's going to be mad and Pharaoh he ain't gonna think he ain't gonna listen to you because you ain't nobody. He said, I, this is Yahweh, God, the creator of the heaven and earth, the one who everybody says, Oh, I know Jesus is in control. Then they go about to try to fix it themselves. You understand? You really thought Yahweh was in control, you stopped trying to do that. That's what Yahweh's showing me. So you don't really believe what you say you believe. If Yahweh's in control, then you trust in him. That's the point of us learning about this, these principles in this pattern. Right. So he said, no. He said, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's hearts. Right. You understand? That I might show my power. There's a reason for it. There's a reason that we're going through coronavirus. It's not happenstance. It ain't the government trying to kill us all. Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. You understand? It ain't the Democrats, it ain't the Republicans, it ain't CERN, it ain't the scientists. Yahweh has this plane out for his purpose. Mm-hmm. Finish reading that. Mm-hmm. Or was that uh, Yo, no, fifth verse. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh when mm-hmm. I stretch forth my hand. Go back up. I'm sorry. Go back up mm-hmm. to four. Okay, four verse. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto I'm you. Sorry, three. <laughs> three. <laughs> That's okay. And I will hearten Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may Even after all that. Right. He said he's going to multiply his signs and wonders in Egypt, right in Mm -hmm. Pharaoh's backyard. And even after that, he will not. Now, are we seeing Mm -hmm. this today? Yes. I mean, I, you know, I've always been, uh, kind of distrustful of people. I think people are lazy and just don't want to, they want to go the easy route. They want to believe whatever's easiest for them to believe. But this level of utter denial on all sides, you know what I'm saying? Just where people are, it's kind of shocking to me. And y'all was like, why is it so shocking to you? I mean, just won't budge. Everybody's an expert. Oh, I did my research. This ain't right. You don't even know what you're reading. Yes, everybody's in there. People don't know how to research. They just like that. Uh, Felicia Hamilton just said, you know, reputable sites. People don't care. They go read on these hackneyed sites, made up sites. They don't care. They just people. It's called confirmation bias. People just seek out what they already believe. You understand? They look for proof for that instead of looking for the evidence to see where the evidence leads them. You understand? That's what they do with the with uh, religion. I was always told it was Jesus. I'm going to roll with Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? After all the evidence that we can provide, the name wasn't Jesus. The name isn't the Lord. Still, well, you call him what you call him, and I'm going to call him what I want to. You understand? Just denial, refusal to accept, as Dr. King said, scientifically attested truth and scientifically proven facts. Refusal to do that. You understand? And that's what he said, Pharaoh. Look, Pharaoh, after all the wonders and signs in Egypt, Pharaoh will not hearken unto you. Go ahead with four. Fourth verse, but Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and That's bring forth. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why the stuff is happening now that Yahweh may lay his hand upon. 
that we may know. Go ahead. And, you're gonna and bring, bring forth, forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. Great judgments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why this is happening now. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh to show his power. You understand? Not for you to be arguing with your neighbors and, <laughs> and your family. I mean, family's breaking apart over this stuff. Vaccine yeah. and no vaccine. You understand? You wonder, do people really see the lunacy of that? But that's, we're looking at principles, remember? So, like I said, don't think of physical. Ain't nobody telling you to get the vaccine or not to get, do what you want to do. What I'm saying is you're looking at the principles. Just like you take the satanic spirit have to know him by his principles, his attributes. And one of the things that Dr. Kim compared him to was alcoholic drinks. I used to love to drink, so I know all about that. When you're under the influence of it, you are not yourself. You don't remember things. Your judgment is impaired. Your motor control is impaired. You are literally in another world when you drink it in excess. So that's the same thing you see now. People are literally, they don't even realize how crazy this stuff is. This is everybody just rah, at each other's throats. You know what I'm Not stopping to think, as Dr. Kelly said, we had Rhonda had that red last uh, this Tuesday. Stopping and thinking for a moment on the essential things of life. You know what I'm saying? I think she had that part red. All right, go ahead, keep reading. I'm sorry. That's okay. Exodus 8 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses. Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, let my people go that they may serve me. Mm -hmm. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs, mm -hmm. and the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, mm -hmm. which shall go up and come into thy house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm lost my breath there and to the house of thy servants uh, there we go and upon people and upon thine ovens and into the kneading troughs and the frogs shall come up both on thee and okay. upon thy people and upon all thy servants you can go to the next one okay those are the plays that's Remember, right it's principles right. sometimes we get bogged down like okay now what's the principles of the frogs and the coronavirus <laughs> like it's right, right, just looking right. at the principle of a plague yes the principles yeah right <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead okay so that's exodus 9 and 1 then yahweh said unto moses go in unto pharaoh and tell him thus saith yahweh elohim of, he of the hebrews let my people go that they may serve me for if thou refuse to let them go and will hold them still Behold, the hand of Yahweh is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be very grievous moraine. That's this okay. destruction. Mm -hmm. What's the next one? Is it uh, 10? 10 and 1 through 6. That's, uh, 10 and That's one the one. Two. Okay. And Yahweh said unto Moses, go in unto Pharaoh, and I have hardened his heart. Well, I have and hardened heart his heart. Mm -hmm. See that? Yahweh keeps saying that. Yahweh mm -hmm. don't just... You understand he's consistent mm -hmm. i have hardened his heart right i have made him be this way to refuse to let you go you to my mm -hmm. children of israel go yahweh's doing it mm -hmm. you understand well why did he do it go ahead and read mm -hmm. i have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants that i might show these my signs before him Mm -hmm. and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and thy son's son mm -hmm. what things I have wrought in Egypt mm -hmm. and my signs which I have done, done among them that ye may know how that I am Yahweh. They mm -hmm. may know that how right. he is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. He who exists is That's the right. almighty salvation. Not Lord. Not God is my co-pilot. Mm -hmm. Not Jesus with the footsteps in the sand. I was walking with you. And then when you couldn't walk, I carried you. I helped you out. Your assistance. Right. This is Yahweh, creator of heaven and earth, in complete control. Uh -huh. You understand? At all times. And that's what we come to class for, to try to learn. Uh -huh. <laughs> to get Dr. Uh, Janine Whitfield said it a couple classes ago. She talked about how we have been trained in the world to think a certain way. You understand? And that way is contrary to the way Yahweh is teaching us. That's why it takes us so long. That's why it's sometimes a difficult process. 
everything you've been taught from the moment you were born is contrary to what Yahweh, the way Yahweh was. Our concepts and opinions about God, about a creator, whether he exists, he doesn't, what he's doing, our relationship to him, you understand? The amount of control he has over our life. Is it, is it predestiny? Is it destiny or not? Uh, you know, all this stuff. That's why we have all these questions. So that's why we come to class and we have to learn these principles of this pattern. We have to see how Yahweh laid out his story in this Old Testament and how Yahshua fulfilled it to begin to understand Yahweh's purpose. The way I like to say it is we have to learn to speak Yahweh's language. You understand? Down here in Michigan, we got a lot of, I know my time's up, we got um, a large Middle Eastern population. They own a lot of like grocery stores and stuff. You go in there and they're speaking amongst each other. You don't know what they're talking about. You just, it just you don't even pay attention because you have no clue what they're saying. But if you learn the language, see, now you can participate in the conversation. So that's what we have to come and do is learn the language, Yahweh's language how he operates, not what our concept of how he operates is, but how he operates. And I, for one, have been convinced that Yahweh did give him to Kenley a vision and that he showed him, for him to show us how he, his true purpose, his true pattern and plan. And it's consistent with what's in the Bible. It's consistent with science. It's consistent with whatever else you want to talk about. You understand? So I, for one, am convinced. All of us have to be convinced for ourselves. This is your personal relationship with Yahweh. We've heard this many times. Each tub must sit on its own bottom. You understand? Me not liking the way you preach the gospel and getting caught up in that foolishness is not going to, uh, or me disagree or thinking you're wrong about something, that ain't going <laughs> to, I don't I don't even know how I'm saying it. It's a lot of silliness going on. And we all have to examine ourselves and ask Yahshua to remove that. Ask Yahshua to correct us all, correct me, because all of us need it. All of us. Now, Dr. Ron Brazil talked about that last Tuesday, too. Now, not one of us is above reproach when it comes to being righteous or, you understand, trying to, I don't know, be holy. Anyway, get the last one in Matthew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Matthew 24. Oops. Matthew 24, and it's 1 through 8. Uh, one second. 24 scrolling here okay Matthew 24 and 1 and Yahshua went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and Yahshua said unto them see ye not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall mm -hmm. not be thrown down mm -hmm. and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying Mm -hmm. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. First thing he said after that yes. question. You understand? Mm -hmm. And listen, what well, Yahweh's been showing me, you are part of mankind too. Don't deceive yourself. Dr. Kinley wrote in the textbook that this time spirit is always present to deceive us. That's a paraphrase. It's always present to lead us astray or lead us in the wrong direction, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Do I have this church idea that, oh, I'm in class now, so I don't have to deal with that. I'm protected. It's like when the vampires come, you run into church and they can't come into church, I'm protected. Mm -hmm. Is that the concept I have? You understand? Just being in class don't, don't, doesn't make us exempt from that. We have to ask Joshua in our own heart and our mind, you understand, to correct us, to change us, to not let us listen to that same spirit, to know the difference. Again, Dr. Ron talked about it too, that the spirit of discernment, you understand? So first thing he says, look, take you, no man deceive you. Go ahead and I won't mm -hmm. Fifth verse, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, mm -hmm. and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for this all the these boss. things. Mm -hmm. This is the boss. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. Mm -hmm. Read mm -hmm. the rest. We out of time. Read the rest on your own time. I know we've all read that. What I'm saying, brother and Yahshua, is relax. Yahweh's running this. That's what we hope. That's what we need to understand. See, Yahweh's in control. He's running this. Mm -hmm. He has not let us down yet. He ain't going to do it now. Don't get caught up in that stuff. Praise Yahshua.
Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Lewis. I enjoyed that. And uh, once again, I really want to thank everyone for coming out. And um, I will be sending out, um, I'm going to try and see if I can send that audio of uh, Dr. Turner at the side event in 2017. And I'll send a link to the YouTube. And I'll also send a link to the uh, documents that I mentioned. Uh, our next Green Chart Friday, sorry, Green Chart Thursday will be on September 2nd, and that will be covering the arterial circle of Willis. So that is in two weeks from today. So look forward to that, definitely. And once again, just thank you for attending. We're always very happy to see all our visiting brethren. Um, don't have time to name you all, but please know that your presence is acknowledged and appreciated. We do really enjoy when we see our fellow brethren come to visit us. Now our classes are held here every Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and on Sundays from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. But this Sunday we will be meeting in person um, and I think Dr. Shirley Nelson sent that email out. We will be meeting in person, but we are capped at I believe 45 people um, at that location. And once 45 people are there, the building will not let anyone else in the room. So just be advised that email was sent out yesterday. Uh, Dr. Nelson, if you're on, did you have anything else to add? I don't know if she's on or not. Uh, yes, I am oh, on. And okay. I, just, I just wanted to, well, you reiterated it again. And if anyone hasn't got that um, email address, I'll be, if you check your email, everyone should have received it, but it is at 22200 Beach Road, and that's the Beachwood Recreation Center from one from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's Sunday, this Sunday, August 22nd. And again, we are limited to 45 seats, and once the seats are filled, no one else can be or will be permitted in the room. Masks are mandatory and must be worn at all times. So we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Mm -hmm. So now let us all bow our hearts and minds um, to doxology, for the doxology, give Yahweh that, that um, reverence. Mm -hmm. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before all time now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.